This Week in Watches includes a limited run from Moritz Grossmann of Germany, best described as Glasuta's other other watchmaker. If if there's Glasuta Original, which was the first kind of setup shop after the fall of the wall, and then there was Longo, which has kind of become the ultra haute de gamme, Moritz Grossmann is best described as something like a Laurent Ferrier of Germany. They're much lower in volume than even Longo, which makes a good 5,000 watches a year. Moritz Grossmann, you're talking about 200 to 300 watches per year, um, run by Christina Hutter since 2008. Very small brand that makes freaking everything, and I mean everything in the watch. So now you can see uh, the Moritz Grossmann Atom Enamel is the watch we've pictured uh, in the picture in picture, and we're talking 41 millimeters in rose gold. Nico, what do you think about this watch? Well, we've had a lot of discussions about dress watches on the show. Um, me and you are both enthusiasts of that exact topic. Um, in fact, I'm wearing one of Tim's watches right now. So, um, which wrist I'll check show. coming. Oh, yeah. We'll get ready for the wrist check. But, uh, you know, the it's a nice size. You know, I like it over 40. You know, really nice classic case with the gold. And I absolutely love the dial. Love the white. Love the Romans. Actually, no, I'm sorry. Not, is it? No, it is white. It, it's yeah. So, and the small, and small seconds on the, at the 6 o'clock position, ultimate in class, uh, definitely something you can dress up or dress down. Um, it's something that catches my eye for sure. At 25 pieces in white gold and rose gold, like you mentioned, Roman numerals, but on an enamel dial. Now, you've seen kind of the gloss of enamel, how it almost looks wet. Could you just maybe explain to the viewers why it's important that this is not just a painted dial, not just a galvanized dial? What does enamel bring to the table? It, it brings a lot. I mean, it, it's something that a lot of collectors put a huge, you know, price tag on because of the fact that it just shows craftsmanship it shows the dedication to the brand and by the watchmakers that put it together um, it really brings quality up a step yeah it's an enduring feature of a watch and I think whenever you're talking about Glossuta watchmaking especially when you talk about something like this watch's own caliber 100.1 you're really talking about a fusion of what was the pocket watch tradition of the pre-soviet times um, brought into a modern wristwatch paradigm. Longa does it, Glasuda Original does it, Moritz Grossmann does it, but I think it really reaches its apogee when you go back to the use of enamel, which was so prevalent during the pocket watch days, and you combine it with the caliber, in particular used in this watch, which is the three-quarter bridge, the German silver, the nickel copper, alloy, uh, a pillar movement. I mean, it's a pillar movement, which is to say the plates and bridges are separated by pillars. Unless you're looking at something like the Aguidor winning Fernand Bartout Chronomet, the FB1, from this past year, you're not going to see a pillar movement anywhere else. And I'd have to say that when you combine that with the snailing, the polished screws, the incredible engraving on the balance cock, the attention to detail, the chamfered slots, the screwed in chatons holding the jewels, it's almost like with that enamel dial, now you truly feel like you are getting a pocket watch for the wrist on both sides. Yeah, it ties everything in. I mean, like I said, it just absolutely highlights the craftsmanship that was intended to go into the watch. And that's why we place you know, such an enjoyment in getting to see that on a watch and you know the premium on pricing too. Yeah, I mean it's it's worth the money, the premium over a convention uh, conventional Morris Grossman Adam Pure, which is pretty much their entry level model. But when you think about it, it's really not a ton for a watch that's built to the highest standard by hand with hands made by hand. I mean, you, you, when you see that vaulted, beautiful barrel shaped rounded profile to a watch hand, that's the difference between some sort of machine made or stamped component and a hand that is made by an artisan. And that's what you get here. So 34,200 euros for the rose gold and just over 35,000 for white gold without an enamel dial. That would be a shockingly fair price for what you're getting. With the enamel dial, I mean, it's almost singular. It's like you're getting something three times more exclusive than an FP Journ, finished to a higher standard, and priced, well, there, I mean, there really is no FP Journ equivalent to this. Yeah, no, I agree, and I, I think that's why you're going to see, like what I said at the start of this, stuff start catching on. Um, you know, people are, are liking the fact that there are less and less pieces made of you know certain brands these are getting more and more popular obviously they've made it to our platform and we're talking about them so you know I'm sure that a lot of you guys will start doing some reading on them but uh, I definitely see an uptick for this yeah it's an interesting watch from a really interesting brand Moritz Grossmann if you have not read about them wait till the end of the show and then check them out I think you'll be shocked by what you find they are if Longa is the Patek Philippe rival that people need to acknowledge uh, you might even say that 
Moritz Grossmann is in the class of, I would say they're almost like a Lang and Heine, another great German manufacturer that doesn't get nearly enough attention. But I would almost say they don't really have a Swiss equivalent with the exception of something like a, a Philippe Dufour or, um, or if we want to bring Finnish watchmakers in, Kerry Voudelainen. They're that impressive. It's that level of finish.